The Krag Jorgensen served as the main infantry rifle for the United States from 1894 to 1903, when it was replaced by the Model 1903 Springfield. Despite its short service life, there were many small incremental changes along the way, and two late developments unsuccessfully sought to save the Krag from being replaced. The Parkhurst device was patented in January 1903, and was a guide that allowed the magazine to be reloaded by stripper clips instead of loosely dumping in individual rounds. They converted 100 rifles and 100 carbines. Even rarer is the Parkhurst Delinsky, with only a few known examples. Here is an excerpt from the Krag rifle by Brophy. The Parkhurst Delinsky sought to allow soldiers to be able to tell how many rounds were left in their rifle. It had three major components to it. Most noticeable is the indexing arm located above the magazine door. The arm pointed or covered the number of rounds remaining in the magazine, but it didn't work when the magazine was empty. Thus, there was a small button on the left side of the rifle on the side plate marked here as B. They would stick out if there was one or more rounds in the magazine. Last, there was an indicator on top of the extractor that would pop up if there was a round in the chamber marked here as A. All of these were intended to be tactile so a soldier could tell in the dark just how many rounds they had. Zelensky tried to interest the Navy in adopting it but was unsuccessful. And in this video, I'm going to be making a version of the indexing arm. Let's take a look at how the crack magazine works. When the loading door is opened, it cams a follower arm back. Rounds are inserted, and when the door is closed, the follower arm pushes them across a channel below the action, up a curve on the right hand side ready to be fed into the chamber. When empty, you can see the end of the follower. It pivots on this pin here, actually a part of the follower arm itself, and this is where the Parker Stolinski indexing arm attaches. Before I get started, I'm going to make a mock-up. I use the pictures to measure the width and length of the arm compared to the magazine door. I'm cutting it out of cardboard and using epoxy to attach it to the follower on my spare crack barreled action. Now I can get an idea of how it will look and how it will work when the magazine door is open and closed. I was a bit concerned that it would hit the door as it opens but it looks like it pulls away just in time to clear. I think that this looks pretty good. So let's knock it off and build the real thing. One problem is that the follower arm inserts into the action from below, so it's not as simple as attaching the arm to the follower. It's going to need to be a separate piece inserted from above. I think that the best way to attach the arm to the follower is to drill a hole in the follower and press the arm in from above. That way it'll be removable if I need to disassemble it in the future. And since I'll need to drill, I'm going to test the hardness of the file. The file isn't cutting, so it's pretty hard. I think I'll need a carbide drill bit. The follower arm is a pretty complicated shape, and I tried to fit it into the lathe to precisely drill it out, but I had to resort to the drill press. I'm getting out the dial test indicator to help me align the follower arm and the drill press vise. Getting it vertical is really hard to do, so this will help. I'll also set it up so the hole will be exactly in the center, but I only have my eyeballs to go off of. The first step is to make a starting divot with a center drill, and then switch to the 8 inch carbide drill bit to drill it to depth. This is an odd three flute bit I found, but it worked perfectly fine. To make the arm, I have an old saw blade that I've already used to make some leatherworking knives. That's just about the right thickness. I'll just clean it up a bit to make sure it'll work. I'll drill a hole and use that to plug weld a piece of 8 inch rod. I cut it out off camera using an angle grinder. And here I'm approaching the final shape by using a sanding drum. I'm going slow here and moving just a little material at a time. I'm worried about it getting too hot and that causing the weld to fail. 
I'm also making it a bit thicker than how it is in the pictures, again worried about the durability. I'll clean up the face of the arm using sandpaper, and after degreasing I'll dip it in some cold glue. And finally I'll cut off the extra rod and clean up the cut end with a file. Now it's time to reassemble the magazine. The follower goes up from below. Align the spring. And the door has a protrusion that hooks onto the follower to cam it back when opened. Inserting the hinge pin is tricky due to the spring tension. And after I filmed this, it finally clicked for me to use a clamp instead of my hands. I put a piece of tape on the door to get the angle of the arm right. I'm using a drop of thread locker. It would probably be better to use a retaining compound, but this is what I had on hand. And it's a bit of a press fit anyway. I'm using pliers to squeeze it together. And I'll just check to make sure the arm clears the opening door just like it did on the mock-up. And finally I'll test it out by loading some rounds in and seeing how the arm points when it's full. One thing left to do is to stamp the numbers on top of the door, but I'm not very confident in my ability to align hand stamps and get a crisp marking on hard steel. If anyone has any other ideas, let me know down below, but maybe some sort of engraving or etching would work. And with that, thanks for watching. This is a relatively quick project, providing a unique feature that only involved modifying one part.